Hello, everyone. It is Wednesday, the 4th of November, and we are meeting again for the Topher Spin Meteorites uh, Hangout, our weekly hangout. Um, Going to do a little bit shorter one today, maybe not a deep dive into a subject matter like we usually do by default every week. There seems to be a lot going on in everyone's life right now, tonight, especially the night after the election. So we wanted to make sure we got together for positive vibes. I need them today. And uh, we're going to show off some nice meteorites. I have a few box openings to do. Uh, I also have a great um, check-in from our good friend Marco Geiser in, uh, or Geiser in Germany. So um, I have some stuff that I can show. If anyone wants to go first, they're more than welcome to, to raise their hand. Okay. I have a pretty neat announcement to make. Um, Oz Backman is not on the chat right now, but uh, Oz and I are pretty good friends. We chat a lot uh, offline, uh, all out, of the, out of the Hangouts on, on Facebook and on, on our cell phones. Um, he's come over to my house before. We did a hangout, I think maybe the third hangout or so we did from my house and, and Oz and Mark Lyon were here. Well, um, Oz and I were able to achieve something this past week that uh, was momentous for him. Uh, big, huge for me as well, but momentous for him was his first time getting his name published in the Met Bull. Now the Met Bull is the meteoritical um, bulletin uh, database. So it's the official listing of all classified meteorites. And uh, Oz and I went in as co-main mass holders on the odd-numbered Golden Palestine, as it's nicknamed. It's NWA-13579. And I'm going to have a, uh, a live sale on November 14th. So I'm having a live sale. And, I, and these Hangouts aren't sales or sales pitches, but I will be selling my first pieces of this brand new um, classified palisite uh, on that sale on Saturday. But uh, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. But I figured I would show off to the crew here and to those joining on YouTube around the globe, like Marco, uh, what the main mass looks like. Uh, let me see if I can replace, yeah. So this is uh, NWA13579. It is a golden palisite from Niger, found in 2019. And it is an absolute amazing specimen because it's 205 grams of the currently less than uh, about 600 and, and there's about 644 grams of it. And this is 205 grams of it. And I'm really hoping all this detail, I'm gonna zoom in in a second, but I just want you to be able to appreciate the piece as a whole. It's actually shaped like, uh, like Africa, I think a little bit. That's what it reminded me of. But it is just absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous palisite. And you can just see all the olivine and crystals. This side has fusion crust on it. So this is my new pride and joy. And uh, I didn't think I'd be doing this, but I'm actually gonna be making this available. I'm gonna put it up for sale on my, on my live sale. And because everything in my live sale is 10% uh, off, this will be 10% off too. I'm not gonna name a price here. You gotta come to, look at that fusion crust and all those little caves. Yeah, it has beautiful olivine. Really, really gemmy. In the, uh, in the Met Bowl, it's classified as a palisite which is the most basic scientific uh, name for this. It's like, oh look, that's beautiful. All that fusion crust. I actually put this in my ultrasonic cleaner before taking pictures of it. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm really super happy with this. It's beautiful. Um, 
What was it? I was just saying something and got distracted. Uh, was it something about the palisite classification? Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. So, um, and this is something like we all we, we all learn and go through. Let me see if I can cancel the spotlight. There we go. We all uh, learn as we go through the process of collecting meteorites or getting into meteorites and and you know you obviously want to be educated when you when you spend money on meteorites or on anything so um i learned a little bit um through the classification and and, and public uh knowledge of this meteorite <clears throat> and i wanted to simplify it as much as possible and use as very limited scientific words for my wife as possible and I, I don't mean that to be offensive, but I just, she loses interest as soon as I say meteorite, chondrite, or classification. So uh, I basically explained it to her that <clears throat> the testing that I, that I, all right, let me put it this way. Uh, it is identified as a palisite. That is like going somewhere and saying, I have a pickup truck. Okay, that tells us something about it. We know it's a pickup truck. We know it's an automobile. We know kind of what, it, is it a dually? Is it like a diesel? Does it have extended? Like there's so much more we can know about that. And the way you know about that is by looking at it, finding out what features it has. And, oh, it's a Nissan Pathfinder. Okay, we know exactly what type of pickup truck that is. So right now I can scientifically prove that I have a pickup truck. I have a Palisite. And Mike Kelly helped me understand a little bit as well about the classifications. So when you, if you were to do more testing on this meteorite to find out more than it's just a pickup truck, we wanna know what type of pickup truck. Is it a anomalous? Is it an ungrouped? Is it a main group palisite? Is it an Eagle Station? Palisite, there's all kinds of pickup trucks it could be. And the way you find out that is by doing more research, and that would be um, metallurgy. So finding out the metallurgy content and finding out what classification, uh, grouplet, I believe, uh, it, it, it falls into, what, what group it falls into. So uh, that's something that I learned uh, and, and I'm continuing to learn. Uh, like we had Tarda come out recently, and that's a, a C, it was released as a C2 and then changed to a C2 ungrouped, or uh, maybe it wasn't actually published, but, but it's now it's, it's a C2 ungrouped, which tells us more than it just being a C2. We know it's a compact car, now we know it's a Prius. So Hopefully that makes sense to everyone when I use that kind of uh, analogy as to, you know, digging into a type of meteorite and then a class and a group. It all follows a, 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 a scientific structural tree. But uh, I had a really cool meteorite in my collection that I bought through measure in 20, it, I, I uh, got it in early 2020, knowing it was found in 2019. And I've done enough research now that I'm 100% confident that this 75 gram piece that I already had in my collection is the same exact fall and part of the same mass as my classified meteorite, NWA 13579. So I've done enough research to backtrace this from the ground to me and the other lot from the ground to me and confirm that yes, these are one and the same materials. So here they are side to side. I don't think there's much question in anyone's mind. But what's cool about that now is this piece that was in my collection labeled as 
NWA palisite. Now I get to replace it with the actual classification and that will in, in, increase the total known weight to just over 700 grams. But this is a beautiful piece of it as well. And I may just keep this one in my collection if I'm able to sell the other ones. It is just jemmy. And you'll notice up in this corner here, you'll see different colored olivines, like there's a green, greenish hue to that one there. I don't know if that's coming through or not, but it's noted in the Met Bowl that there's golden, uh, amber, and green, I think, uh, olivines and fusion crust. And you're definitely seeing, you know, you're definitely seeing fusion crust all in here and all down in here. So this is something I'm super proud of to be um, met buddies with Oz Backman on a palisite where you can see where the fusion crust cracked off that olivine. Lucky us, because now we get to see the olivine. Yeah, so I'm gonna add that to the, uh, to the total known uh, weight of the classifieds uh, and then uh, get the Met Bull updated. And that converts my piece now to a classified palisite, golden palisite. So pretty happy about that. Thanks, John. Let me see here. Do I have anyone who's wagging at the camera wanting to show something off? Hey, Matt Stream, how are you, bud? Good to see you. Hey, good. Uh, first of all, congratulations, Topher. That is so beautiful, and I can't wait to get a piece from you. Thank you, man. Uh, I really appreciate that. It, yeah, it's it's been it's been a struggle holding on to it and not showing all of these things because I bought them months ago. I know. I remember <laughs> you showed me a couple sneak peeks, but um, now it's official. So yeah, Definitely, I'm gonna want a piece. <laughs> Thank you, man. I it, and, and the, the main mass I cleaned up in the ultrasonic cleaner, so now it's 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 just it's beautiful. It's just striking. Um, I like removed like a quarter gram of material, and the entire thing came to life. It's, it's absolutely amazing how little material could be on there, but it's just a thin coating of silicates, uh, caliche and stuff in the cracks and crevices. Once you get it out, it just pops. That's uh, true space gold. It really is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, I do have a couple new things, but I don't want to, you know, intrude on what you're doing right now. We are doing the Matt Stream Show. All Streaming right. into your house right now. <laughs> All right. Um, so I got a new Canyon Diablo that um, just came in the mail. Oh, we. It's got a real nice shape. Yeah. And that's from Mike Miller. I Mike bet Miller's he probably a... found it himself. I'm not sure. Wow, that's gorgeous. So I'm real happy with this one. That is great shape. I like that little nodule <laughs> that sticks out right there. Wow. And these are all ones I got this week. So I got this. Um, this is the best... Uh, gold basin I've ever seen just real fresh fusion crust on it oh man that's huge too yeah it's 100 grams and it came from KD Meteorites they found it their team mm. and I, I know I was telling you I was plugging them on our trip in Franconia but yeah, wouldn't uh, shut up. <laughs> yeah I know <laughs> but this is why they mm. have some great stuff and and you know um we know how hard it is to find stuff in the field now. So I really appreciate, you know. Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah, you can pry it out of my dead hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's gorgeous, man. Thanks. I have a new appreciation for Arizona Falls and fine, Arizona Fines yeah. now. It's, it's, a, it's rough and rocky out there. It is. And uh, everything's weathered to um, the same degree as the – geology around it so it makes it hard to spot anything really it's it's difficult plus all the hot rocks yeah all the hot rocks and all the bullets oh so here's a franconia another new one to the collection 
This is wow. what we were looking for. Wow. And they just have these micro regma glyphs on it all around it, which are just real beautiful. That's what I was looking for in the field was something that's popped out like that. Just what I was looking for. And that actually has a, is a great example of it. I, I don't think it's the, uh, the uh, artificial lighting, but it has a purplish hue to it. You're right. No, it does. And I was looking for that too. Unfortunately, we didn't find any, but. Well, did you find a small fragment of the Sacramento? Was that ever confirmed? Um, well, good, good that you ask. Let me uh, find out how I cancel you as a, as a thing. Um, anyway, uh, let me see here. The, um, I, do have some, I do have some good news about that. This is the one that I think I, I found. This, this is what we're resting all the success Man. of the trip on. <laughs> oh, it's worth it, though. That is yeah. cool. So um, basically, I, I, I don't want to, we're going to go right back to you, but I'll tell oh, the sure, story sure. of this. Um, I found this out there. Uh, it's solid iron or solid metal. <laughs> solid metal. It, it doesn't, it's not chondritic. It's, it's a metal blob. I believe it's, me I want to believe it's meteoritic. I, I hope it's me meteoritic. If it is, it's Sacramento Wash 005. H metal or a metal blob off of the Franconia stony meteorite. Right, at, right. I read that. At that yeah, that was uh, um, Dr. Carlton Moore's opinion. Okay. Well, and, how did you find it? Um, it we were out there, and, and it just was, it was another. I thought it was another bullet type thing. I mean, it was a strong, strong signal. It wasn't a. It was a whip, 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 whip. I oh. found it right away. I found it there. It jumped onto my magnet. And uh, as soon as I looked at it, I'm like, that looks really, really convincing on the surface. But let me pause real quick. So I pulled it out of the ground and this is what I was uh, confronted with. Does it look like we're recording, guys? Yeah, it's recording. Awesome. So as you can see in these pictures here, it, it, like in, especially in this one, uh, it has uh, a lot of features on top of it that look very meteoritic. I don't know if you'll be able to see this if I do that. Nope, that doesn't help at all. Um, but uh, the surface looks very meteoritic. The bottom on this one especially looks like chondrules, but it's not. There's, it's not a silicate. It, there's not, it's not a stony. It's, it's solid metal, as you can see here where I kind of uh, sanded it down, sanded it down some more. And I got it to about a thousand grit uh, smooth, but it's so small it was rounding over. So as you can see in these, uh, these pictures, I'm not an expert on, on etching or polishing. That's why I have other people do it. But I rounded it, rounded it over, as you can see, and then put 10% uh, nitol, uh, nitric acid on it. No etch. Uh -huh. No etch whatsoever. So the mystery remains, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I do have an update. Um, Jason Utis at uh, UCLA has offered to do a scanning electron microscope uh, analysis of this and get me my metal content, my metal contents so we can make sure there's nickel make sure there is or is not nickel in there yeah i'm hoping there's about five percent uh, well more than that i hope there's about a high percentage of nickel because it's solid metal so it's either extremely awesome terrestrial stuff that i will keep as the best meteorite wrong can make trip story i have <laughs> or it's my third find <laughs> so heck yeah uh, Let's go right back to you, uh, Matt Stream of Streaming Meteorites. All right. Well, congratulations. Uh, yeah. Thank you, man. Well, yeah. I mean, can, hopefully. Yeah. I'll, I accept congratulations conditionally. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, it's a good find, uh, yeah. even if it's a meteor wrong. It's, it's a learning experience. It is. Yeah.
Um, oh, okay, I got a couple new ones um, from, let's see. Let me find the tag here where these were from. Oh, Mojave Mountains. Oh, yeah. Another yeah, one. So this is a, a low known weight. I don't know if you could see it very well, but it's pretty nice. Fusion yeah. crested. And this one is in the Mojave Desert as well. So we could probably go hit this spot next, too. I'm down. And then I got another one here, too, as well. Oh, that's beautiful. The lighting's really perfect right there, too. Man. Nice. Wow. Nice fusion crusted. Yeah. It's almost about the same degree of weathering as the Franconia. Maybe a little bit fresher, but um, you could tell this one fell quite a while ago, too. Man, that's, that is fantastic. I think Mojave I paid 150 Mountain. bucks for these two, about 18 grams or something. I unfortunately had to sell or to barter away the one Mojave Mountain I had. I had a nine gram one and it was part of the deal in order to get the slice of Chandler. Oh, that's worth it then. <laughs> so I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got one more I want to show before you cut me off. Yeah, man. All right, so this one came from Raymond Borges and he actually packed it in this little foil thing here. That's classy. Yeah, sealed and everything. And then it came in this case right here with this sticker on it. Top. And then Self. it's one of his August Circus, I think that's how you say it, um, pieces. And it was the last piece he said that he had left that had the blue crust on it. And here and there. Not the best light, but. Hey, Oz is here. Nice. Hey, Oz. Man, it took me two hours to log into this. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. I've been sitting here since like 3.30 or 3.40 trying to get into this meeting. Yeah. Let me, let me just give a little warning. Um, some people, um, if you're, if you're trying to get into a, a Zoom meeting, mine or someone else's, and it starts asking you questions about your birthday and stuff, it's a phishing thing. So um, somehow people are smart enough to mess with our lives and, and make life just a little bit more miserable than it has to be. Um, so we actually had um, Dr. Karen Ziegler, or Ziegler uh, wanting to join a hangout one time. Now she is uh, the... I want to say the leading, you can argue with me, with me if you want. I'm going to say she is the leading expert in oxygen isotope testing, especially oxygen 17, uh, O17. Um, and uh, there's, there's numerous places that do testing for oxygen 16 and 18, but 17 is the key. And um, she is the leader of that at the at University of New Mexico. So she wanted to join one of our, our hangouts and unfortunately got the Oz treatment where she was abused and not let in. Oh, so man. if you're ever trying to get into a, into a Zoom meeting, you should only ever need the password and the meeting ID. So, Matthew, thanks for sharing those things. Man. Some amazing Arizona stuff. Uh, that Canyon Diablo is just... Yeah. Beautiful. The shape on that one. I'd, I'd love to see that one more time, man. Sure. Wow. When we, wow. when you hear uh, the term thrown out, and I want these to be educational as well. You know, we're looking at eye candy, but uh, I'll throw some technology and some, some terms out there. For people who aren't familiar with the term natural patina, mm. you are looking 100% at, at the definition of natural patina. It has not been overly cleaned. It has not been scrubbed. It has not been abused and, and, and is falling apart. It looks like it is in the as found condition. But the natural patina obviously lets you know it's been there for a while. 
Thank you, Matt, so much. Yeah, I thanks for letting me share. Yeah, I appreciate you showing that off. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Um, we have Juan uh, Avidius uh, coming Juan. in from Spain slash Morocco. Hello, buddy. How are, how are you? Good night from uh, North Africa. Hey, we're, we're doing well, man. Everyone, Perfect. hello, Juan. <laughs> Hi, Juan. First of all, I would like to say you congratulations for your so uh, stunning policy. This is really impressive. So congratulations. Thank you very much, sir. I'm humbled. Appreciate yeah, it. This, this night I have something for you because uh, you say a few days ago I received the first thin sections of the um, of the new possible lunar that I saw you some weeks ago, the, the Green Crusade. So, because it's mine, I don't have problem to show pictures of the thin sections under microscope. So no secrets and uh, no fucking shit. I'm going to show right now because it's mine and I can. Nice. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm, going, I'm going to share. I'm going to share my screen. Let me uh, right here. Okay, you can see my screen. Yeah. Okay. Let me go directly. Now this lunar, for those who haven't seen the picture, do you have pictures of, of the lunar itself? Oh yeah, you do. Okay. Wow. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you uh, the fresh cuts of the of the process of the beginning uh, to make the thin section. So this is glued uh, to the porta. Uh, I don't know in English how to say. Well, anyway, you can see the the close texture of this material. Take a look at the big uh, feldspar crystal. The most part are big, big uh, plagioclase crystals. And a little dark, dark matrix. Let me show you. Right here, you can see uh, mm. the, the green, uh, the green fashion crust. Wow. That's incredible. Let me. Uh, so, uh, in the first moment, I, uh, let me, I'm going to put off the, the sound of my mobile because I, I'm hearing myself and it's crazy. <laughs> um, Okay, uh, in first moment, I thought uh, that uh, this way will be a typical uh, lunar feldspathic breccia, but uh, when I re when I received the um, the thin section and uh, my my friend Jose Garcia that is made in the the thin section uh, job, but take a look at under microscope, have a really uh, strange uh, unusual features, and let me show you. One moment, I'm going to go to the thin sections under the scope. Okay, right here. The most interesting thing is uh, under microscope, all these gray parts are the plagioclase crystals, all this part. So the first interesting feature is that all the crystals uh, have an isotropic feature. So isotropic means that uh, it's a crystallographic texture is not well defined because it's really highly altered, probably some parts uh, too much kelinite. So for this reason, all the, all the gray parts um, are uh, um, plagioclase crystals, so really altered uh, probably by a huge, huge, huge uh, pressure event uh, probably during the, during the impact and ejection from moon. So yeah, I was gonna this say is one the, of the first the, interesting the, the things. State, the state of the, them being highly altered means that they went through a, some kind of shock event or um, you know, a water or heat, but most likely shock in this, in this case. Yeah. Yes, uh, all the, the normal features of the plagioclase crystals when they suffer all, uh, a huge uh, pressure event is that they lost all, all his crystallographic uh, texture and it begins to be vitrified. For example, the, the famous case of maskelinite is uh, plagioclase crystals that uh, after suffer a big, big pressure event, uh, his crystallographic uh, texture disappear and begin to be vitrified, like glass. Um, it's like glass. Mm -hmm. So uh, all the vitrified material under microscope, uh, it's uh, isotropic. So you can't see really like other crystal clinopiroxens or olivines or other silicates. Yeah. Uh, the vitrified material, you can't see its uh, natural texture because it's uh, it's uh, it's destroyed in some uh, in some part. And that's so, uh, isotropic. This, all of this. Uh, isotropic. Isotropic means that. Okay. Yeah, isotropic means that the the light 
can't pass uh, through the through the the crystal. So it's the same in all his directions. So he gotcha. not he not he uh, it doesn't uh, change his color. Like uh, for example, other silicates like olivine, clinopyroxenes. Perfect. Thank so you, Juan. I appreciate explaining that to me. Beautiful. No problem, man. And uh, let me let me show you where is uh, the um, the part of the fashion. Right here is uh, it's uh, the part of the fashion crust, and you can see some bubbles right Ooh. here. Product of the quickly, quickly melt and quickly cold. So that's slick. Yeah. Wow. And uh, one in other, interest, other interesting thing uh, uh, that uh, we 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 saw in this uh, under the, the microscope is that the olivines, the small uh, crystal of olivines, present a wave on the, um, uh, wave extin extinction. Means that when you are rounding uh, the thin section in the microscope the color uh, begin to, to change like a wave. So that is also an indicator of high pressure event. Oh. So this rock uh, suffered probably a, a really, really high pressure event. Also, let me show you, I have the pictures right here, maybe right here, yeah. This beautiful picture made by my friend Jose Garcia from the from the museum, the uh, Museum of Canarias of Metroids. He do a really great job in in thin sections. So here you can see a, a beautiful crystal of clinopyroxene, and if uh, under uh, crossed polars and uh, uh, parallel lights. So you can see uh, some little bands, right? Yeah. This is also an indicator of a high pressure event that the rock suffer. And right here you can see embedded. This is an also an isotropic uh, uh, ilmenite, ilmenite uh, crystal. So other interesting thing in uh, in this material is that uh, the most part of the most part of the of the thin sections don't show uh, too much metallic phases. Normally, the feldspathic breaches, the lunar feldspathic breaches, have a lot of contamination of metallic phases from uh, impact of other asteroids in the surface mm -hmm. of the moon. But this one don't present camasite and other typical uh, metal phases of uh, uh, present in lunar. So maybe and probably. Uh, uh, was uh, not in the direct surface of the moon because don't have uh, it's not contaminated with metallic phases. So it's a really interesting material. It's already in its way uh, to Daniel's sake. So we prefer to send uh, him the thin section already made because we are more quickly than sending to one laboratory to make. So it's my friend from the museum. And when something is nice, we make the thin section quickly and we send to him to save time to Daniel. So he he can be more quickly in the in the in the in the test and in the classification, so we are so that excited with this uh, with this material, and uh, I already have some of them slices. So I hope to have the results of this classification soon. So I hope you enjoy these uh, beautiful uh, pictures on their on their microscope. Yeah, I'm that, so that is gorgeous. Mainly, mainly yeah. clinopyroxenes, some olivines, and pigeonite. Hey, I wanted to ask you a question, Juan. Hey, we're on the same screen. Oh, yes, oh. Um, let, let me let... Uh, okay. you, yeah, let, you, you uh, were, how, how I change the... I think you just stopped sharing. Um, but uh, the, the question I had for you was... Um, yes. There you go. Um, the question I, I had for you was um, you were talking about metal inside of meteorites, uh, 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 yeah. uh, lunars. And my question is, and maybe you don't know this or not, but you, what is the metal content percentage in that lunar sample? Do you know? Yeah, for, for the moment, I can't uh, tell you exactly the, the, the quantity, the percentage of how much it has, but it has uh, really little in, in the, we are, uh, we are, we have analyzed uh, 14, uh, 14 sections, and in all the thin sections, there is no camas, there is no other metallic phases, only some, some small ilmenite crystals. Uh, so it's uh, strange because normally all the feldspathic lunar breaches have uh, some quantity. I don't know exactly how much is the percentage. Yeah. 
it's not too much, of course, but mm -hmm. there is there is always a, a little contamination of, of metal yeah. faces. Yours is so beautiful. Um, I don't say this lightly, that it reminds me of NWA 5000. It's a very, very beautiful lunar. And yeah. NWA 5000 had metal flex in it. So I was looking yes. for that present in yours and I didn't see any, I mean, I saw none. So it's, it's like NWA yeah. 5000, beautiful, um, a high pressure ejection event of, uh, of um, the, the top chemicals, uh, the, the, the top minerals. So we're probably talking uh, about are we, as a as the percentage of an orth site been talked about? That is exciting news. Yeah. I can't wait to yeah. see it in person. I didn't I didn't know if the uh, an orth site was was mentioned. The amount of an orth site in that one. Okay. Oh, I, I don't fair? know. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Don't yeah. fair? Yep, yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay. So sometimes I have like one bad connection. Sorry, okay. man. That's all right. I was asking if you know the, uh, do they, do you know the amount of a north site in there? And uh, uh, what, what, what crystal? A north site? Yes, uh, an north site is, uh, is uh, the plagio class crystal is the north site. Gotcha. Is one okay. type of, uh, is the, plagio, the plagio class that what I'm talking about is the, is the north site. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to I wanted to confirm that we're talking I want to talk about the same thing because yeah, it looks beautiful, dude. I'm I'm very very happy and excited for you. Um, with my palace, I get me classified. Uh, I'm going for the moon next. I'm going for the moon one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Any anyway, today today I would like to I will as as all the weeks uh, I'm wake up so late here, so I have something nice to show you uh, in life. So let me. I'm going to change to the mobile and I go. Awesome, Let that's me. great. Hey, Roberto, um, I am ready to come to you if you are ready, my man. Yeah, I'm here. Um, so I don't know if, uh, I don't know if I showed this already, but uh, this is my largest meteorite that I got like recently, in the last, uh, I wanna say in the last two or three weeks. Um, it's 6.5 kilos, so kind of a kind of a monster there. Yeah, and if you look, it's got a uh, Oscar Mane collection number on it. Oh my god! Ooh. How and, the heck? Yeah, it's the other side of it. It's a uh, it's big and rusty a little bit. Um, but still pretty, pretty happy about it. And, uh, hold on one second. Let me see if I can. What is it? What? Is it Odessa? If you look, um, that 8.9, oh, that 8.9 is listed in Oscar Monig's catalog. Oh, wow. So it's, uh, the 6.534 kilogram. Yeah, um, a third of the way down. Yeah, that's amazing. amazing. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah. That so is that's... a massive Toluca to have and a great provenance. Yeah. See your meteorite etching kit from uh, Paleo Bond. Yeah, so there there are parts here um, and here that worry me a little bit in terms of um, oxidation. Mm -hmm. And I was watching a video um, on on Airlight's page uh, about um, Bill Mason. It, it was a video of Bill Mason um, like restoring a piece. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of I don't want to. Uh, put it through electrolysis because I'm sure I'll lose that number in that process. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I do kind of want to get at this and this right here because it worries me that over time it'll just uh, it'll turn into a pile of rust. But Toluca's beautiful, so... Yeah. I mean, yeah. 
I actually have a, a box opening I'm going to do, and I expect there to be a slice of Toluca in there. So I, I would be upset if there wasn't a piece in there. It doesn't. It doesn't need too 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 much. I love it. It, it seems pretty uh pretty stable. I would think it's been in Florida for the last thirty years. Oh, that's freaking awesome, man! I like that a lot. Um, oh, I, I like that a lot, man. Congrats, dude. That's that's a massive, <clears throat> massive piece with some nice provenance. I have a piece that has some good provenance. I'm get, just getting it from Chris Colvin. And this is being classified currently. So, and it's actually being subtyped. So what you are about to look at, and me for the first time, as you saw, I just opened um, What's that? So, oh, that's the bomb. So let me see here. All right. So now, without further ado, my brand new main mass. Ooh, from the Christopher Colvin. Nice card. Yeah, I know. When, when you know him as Chris, you see Christopher, and you're like, ooh, that's not very special. So this is a mesosiderite or a mesosiderite. Um, being classified, so we don't know what subtype it is. Um, <laughs> laughingly, uh, Chris is hoping it's a standard A, B, me. I'm hoping it's a B3. <laughs> I could use one of those in my collection. Um, so this is the main mess. And, oh, he sealed it up pretty nicely. Wait till you see that inclusion. Uh, that, that metal inclusion, it, it has beautiful detail on it. Wow. You have to be smarter than the tape. There we go. Okay. So, let's see if it opens now. Sweet. Oh my God. I'm already wow. in love. I'm already in love. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah, I got a piece of that too. Yep, I, I want to put ours together and see where they met. Look at that. Look at that metal. How sexy is that? Wow. Mm. That 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 was a closer for me. <laughs> no kidding. That was a closer. I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. So what's nice about this is it's a uh, it's an end cut too. So you would never really know, at least I would never know that there's that much beauty hiding in that rock right there. But it does show obvious meteoritic signs. Uh, that inclusion, that inclusion looks a lot like uh, like the metal nodules in Bondock, which is also a exactly. Metal. I'm so glad you said that yeah. and thought that because Bondock is a rarer. Um, isn't it a B class? Uh, but it's a rarer um, um, mesosiderite. So when I saw this, I was really hoping, oh, wow, we might have a, a, a rare subtype. And it is being subtype. But look at the, the mixture of silicates and olivines and peroxines. You, you, you get about a 50-50 mix in a uh, mesosiderite. But you can still see the beautiful colors, the tans, the ambers coming through. And then you have that that nodule. I'm so glad it was cut right there. Great oh. So that is my new main mass, and I'll have this in my collection for many years to come. It is not for sale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let me see here. Does anyone else have something they'd like to uh, to show off? Oh, friend, uh, I, think they, uh, I, I think they solved my problems with the connection. Oh, good. Good, good deal. deal. Yeah, let, let me, I'm going to show you again, again, the, the, the material that I show you. Okay. Roberto, you also have a piece of this uh, mesosiderite, don't you? Yep. 
So this is uh, also from Chris Colvin, cut from that main mass. It's uh, 22 grams, I believe. Uh, I haven't taken it. I, I took it out, but then I put it back in, and then I taped it, so I'm probably not going to go through that trouble again. Mm -hmm. um, Humidity is an issue in Connecticut, so I try yeah. to keep them locked in one of these airtight enclosures and then... Um, yeah, but it's it's beautiful material, and we had mentioned bond docs, and I have yes. a slice of bond doc that you can oh, see. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, see that? That as soon as I saw that that nodule, I was like, that looks like bond doc. That's not that's not just mesocytorite plain class. That's mm -hmm. that's something special. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, Thank you. Hey, w let's go to Juan, who has uh, better internet, and we'll yes, I have better connection. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I I show you I show you again the this possible uh, you yes possible you relate. Oh is, yeah. Uh, so I hope to find some micro diamonds in the thin sections. <laughs> Do you know um, the cutting of that? Was it uh, a hard one to cut? Yes, the the urilets uh, usually are 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 um, are, uh, are kitty hard, are kitty hard to cut. Yes, yes. Because mm -hmm. I have one I need to cut for Oz, who's nodding his head like I know why Topher's asking this question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I owe, I owe him half of my uh, urolite main mass, and I want to get it cut properly because I heard. The yeah, thing. I I use call I use call uh, with Georgi from Bulgari that made a really really great uh, job. Uh, slicing and I told uh, I told him uh, hey mate uh, maybe you can uh, do this job for me for this uh, for this possible relight and he told me oh man if it's your relight I'm not sure if I can do a good job because it's so hard so anyway we will try we will try to do uh, as, as good as possible so we will see I'm so excited with, with this one yeah. and I also want to show you something this piece is probably the most beautiful tarda that I that arrived to my hands with this back blue trail inside. Wow! No kidding. Yeah, this is one of my most beautiful because the other wow. this uh, arrived to my hands the other day. Mm. It's, it's, it's fucking blue. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, Roberto. Wow, that is amazing, man. Tarda, and, and it's fetching top dollar right now. I mean, it's it's pretty pretty crazy how expensive it is, but it is super special. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't want to I don't want to leave without uh, giving you some paleontology classes. As you know, I'm geologist, but I and my heart is with the paleontology. So I'm going to show you something to okay. make different <laughs> your hangouts. I'm going to show you something <laughs> special that arrived to my hands uh, uh, today. This is uh, a new uh, theropod, carnivorous dinosaur tooth. And it's not from the typical outcrops that uh, are in Morocco from Upper Cretaceous. It's from Middle Jurassic. Uh, it's completely undescribed material. So probably Torbosaurus or something like this. So I'm so excited because this, this material, it's completely new in Middle Jurassic outcrops. Wow. That's... That's and let me show you something more because I work with meteorites and with aliens. Take a look at oh, this. Good night. That one's massive. Yeah, this is a, this is a typical species from uh, the Bonian wow. from South Morocco. It's a Drotops hermatus. It's a professionally prepared. Uh, the most of the spines are restored, but the complete cell is authentic. And one of the features that you must take care of with the trilobos are the eyes. You see the complete perfect eyes with a mm -hmm. lot of uh, different circles that uh, are typical from the from the trilobite. So take a look at that alien. <laughs> I've never <clears throat> I've never seen one that big before. Like. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. You, it's crazy. You show so off that, that one back there. That the trilobite back there. That one. That one is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, wow. 
because some of these prepar some of these preparations are made but really 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 professional guys a lot of hours with uh, with sandblaster and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of work in this in this type of material but it's amazing in, in the in the palisoic era uh, where a lot of different uh, uh, arthropods so really 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 extreme they they were like crabs or something like this now when you're restoring something like that uh, like especially the, the 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 other one that you have there with the, with the legs that are fully, you know, those some of those like that is all put together. I mean that. Yes. That, I mean it's it's not <laughs> fake in any way. I'm just saying part of the restoration pro process is removing yes. the legs, removing everything, and putting it back meticulously. Yes, uh, ab absolutely. The most part of the job is. Uh, Taking out all the all the matrix from around little by little. Of course, during this process, the most part of the genital spines are the, and the and the extremely delicate and fragile details are broken, and later uh, one by one uh, are glued together and restored little by little. So some part of the spines, of course, are restored, but it's uh, it's like an extremely professional professional uh, wow. professional work. So. Some of these, some of these, uh, let me show you something, something different. A lot of different. Ooh, that guy's watching TV. Yeah. The, the, guy's most, sunbathing. The, most, the most part, the <laughs> most part of this material, let me show you. The most part of this material, it's in its, in its natural uh, limestone, uh, limestone matrix. So you must begin to, to, to eliminate all the matrix. So you finally can, uh, can clean all the, all the trilobites. So let me show you, for example, you be, this is partially prepared. It's uh, how it appears in the natural rock. So little by little, you begin to remove with spasians all their own. And finally, you can begin to reconstruct again the trilobites in the flying positions, like the corrective stuff. So that's all that I have for you today. Some aliens, some dinosaurs, and some <laughs> new metals. Uh -huh. Wow. It's absolutely crazy when the dinosaur teeth that you have are not the oldest thing on the show. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, we, Juan, we are so happy and proud that, uh, that you are part of our, our crew. Um, we are, let me see if I can take this off. Yeah, we're getting a lot of thumbs up. So yeah, we're re really happy that you're part of our crew. You, you bring a lot of expertise, um, um, the paleontology uh, point of view. Uh, you, you bring us um, constant updates from the field of what's happening out there uh, when you get in Morocco and when you're also in Spain as well. So really, really glad you're part of the family, buddy. Appreciate it. I'm more than generous. happy to be here. More than happy. Awesome. Uh, I saw a hand go up by Mike Kelly. Is it still up or is it down? And I want to show off something. This is a gift from Andre Gorin. He's a fellow IMCA brother of mine. He's in the Ukraine. When we did uh, one of our hangouts a few weeks ago, maybe a month, two months ago, I forget, um, we showed off, uh, we talked about some of the other stuff that I collect and meteorite, other meteorite people collect. And one of them happened to be desert sand. And he said, he contacted me on, on email and said, hey, I'm hunting the, I'm gonna hopefully say this correctly. Um, oh, I wrote it down, I, no, there you go. I hunted, and he studies actually, Iliot's crater, which is a crater in the Ukraine. So, what he sent me as a gift, wouldn't take any money for freight or anything, was a, is a sample of uh, impact breccia material from the crater. And it is pretty cool. I've seen it before, but this one is special as a gift. So this is terrestrial material that has been fused together through a meteorite impact. This is the event, uh, the end result of terrestrial materials impacting, melting, and fusing together 
you get this brecciated material. This is actually a really nice example too. Right That's there. a nice hunk. Yeah. I, I've had quite a few slices of this. Um, this feature right here, I've not seen in, in, in any of them. I'm gonna look it up into the microscope. That's gonna be fun. So that is really awesome. Uh, I definitely wanna say uh, thank you very much to my IMCA brother on that one. That's, that's really cool. Uh, so let's see the sand that was collected for me as well near Iliot's, I hope I'm saying that right, career. I'm not gonna spill all this out, but there's all kinds of, oh wow, it's a lot, it's a lot, a lot grainier material than just sand. It is quite large. Yeah, there we go. Now it's kind of zooming in. Yeah, so this is, I bet there's, I bet I can look through here and find some more brecciated pieces. But this is a soil sample or a, a sand sample from the Ukraine, um, from Iliot's crater as a gift from my IMC brother. And I'm really, really super happy about that. That's, uh, so it's, it's always nice to get a gift. And then, you know, I offered to pay, hey, let me at least throw you, throw you free you know, from the Ukraine to Arizona. Yeah, I got it for you. I got it. It's awesome. So thank you very much. And it, I, I told him it arrived today, so I'm going to put it on a hangout. So I was glad we're able to squeeze that in because I want to make sure this is not going to get spilled. <laughs> um, I have one more box that I can open if anyone wants to show something off. We can do that as well. Do I see any hands? Where's Pat? Here? Yeah, where's Uncle Pat today? I don't know. I wanted to give him hey, a I little. I was going to say, uh, I'm back if, if I could share for a second. And I was going to share something in honor of Pat. Um, hold on one second. Can you hear me? Yep, one second. Uh, That's where I'm going, Matt. Why is everyone staring at me? Er, we love you. I don't want to be looked at right now. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so I, I noticed Pat was gone too, and Pat's thing every week was the guest the meteorite weight. Oh, you're so right. I'm going to show you the shame of every micro meteorites cl collection. <laughs> Oh, so when you, you when you collect micro specimens, that's what you don't typically have or, or go after. So <laughs> you know it's not huge. This is this is my biggest piece. So you know it's, it's a good hand sized sample. piece that I uh, you know like to pass around. So uh, a Where couple a couple little shallow regs on it, you know, uh, but just a weathered NWA. And the other one is a little little more shapely, and a couple couple regs on there, and it's. Pretty bladey uh, with a very oh I like that back. yeah coarse backside and very smooth other sides the so so that's so this is the one that we're we're guessing at in honor okay. of Pat since he's not here today that's right. awesome I appreciate you carrying along the tradition man not letting it not letting it falter one week do you know if it's an H or an L. I do believe that it is an H. Hmm. Again, not unclassified material, so that's just based on magnetic pole. And would you rotate it one more time in your hand, please? Oh, Matt, you're way low, dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have my answer. I'm putting it in the chat. <laughs> and then, then someone someone can tell me protocol. Do I release it now or, or afterwards? Um, when you're, what I'd like everyone to do is when you're showing stuff, if you show stuff off during a hangout, if you can send me a PM, send it to me, not to a group, send it to me. Yeah. I can put it in the in the write up, 
and it makes the summary a lot easier for me. And so, um, Mike, send me the weight of that and we'll find out. Or actually, you know what? Has everyone guessed? Has anyone not guessed? <laughs> All right. Give it to us. Okay, but so we have, that, we have 225, that. 333, 242, 420, 600, 646, and 400. The actual weight is? 476 grams. Wow. 476. So... That'd be you, Joker. I'm closest with 420. <laughs> <laughs> I always put down 450. Nice. I've got it. Please. I doubt it. <laughs> of that. course. Yeah. Ron, you should have gone 450. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised someone didn't steal it just by saying, ah, it looks like a half kilo. <laughs> That's yep, awesome. So that's that's the biggest biggest piece I got so far. That's cool. awesome. Well, as always, we appreciate you joining us and carrying on the tradition. I don't know where Pat is. I hope he's well. I hope everything we're thinking about you. Um, yeah, he didn't send me any message today saying he wasn't going to join, so I don't know what's going on. But uh, he is missed, and uh, I, I feel less confident to talk about science. <laughs> Yeah. Well, let me show you off uh, my last thing that I have to show off today. And uh, I see Arthur with his hand up, so we'll go to him next. But this is a box that I got from uh, Tom Strutton. Uh, Tom lives down in Tucson, and we did a little, little bartering. Um, he wanted something I had, and I wanted something he had. And then he said that uh, he threw a gift in here for me. So let me find, wow, this is kind of like all taped together. All right, so here's the first item. And let me turn on that camera. You and boom. Boom, okay. So here's, here's the first item. Hopefully it will slide out now. There we go. Got right to it. Ooh. Oh, yeah. There's some iron in there, folks. There's iron. Moving on a lusta. A 40, nice. 40 gram slice. Sweet. I love his handwriting. <laughs> Look at the pattern on this one. Whoa. Amazing. Jeez, it's almost hypnotic. <laughs> yeah, so nice moon out of Lusta from Sweden. Um, the next one is, yes, to match um, Roberto's. Never, ever, ever should he ever cut that one. But if he did, this is what's waiting on the inside. Amazing. Nice block. Look at that. The book is nice. It's so beautiful. And this one actually, I think, has some type of impact story to tell. If I remember based on the picture I saw, is this, uh, I, I look at so many meteorites uh, weekly. No, this may this may not be the one. No, there was another uh, meteor I was looking at that that definitely had an impact story to tell. Th this looks like there's something right here, but uh, the other one was really like super evident. You can see that something got smushed in and melted and pushed its way down in here as well. So that's my Toluca and my. Um, that's my Toluca and my Muniana Lusta. And then I got this big one to open. So bear with me for a couple seconds. So who'd um, you get these from? 
Um, Tom Strutton um, wanted uh, a, I had a Saracho, no, I'm sorry, a Semchen individual um, that he wanted. And he, wow, this, I don't know why I have a power cord. That's <laughs> <laughs> the power, brother. It, it's, uh, okay, my first plug in meteorite. Electrolysis. He said he did say that he that he included a gift. So that's my gift so far. But wait, there's something huge. I don't know what is in this. We're about to open it up. Oh, display case. But it lights up. Rotating. I don't know. All right, so I unfortunately I have it out and I still don't know what it is yet. Let me pull it out like this. All right, so this is what I'm looking at. It looks like oh, it looks like a backlit um, light table. Yeah, a, a light table. That is freaking awesome. Oh, I can. It I can, is awesome. I can. I can. Uh, Photograph my palisites without dropping them. <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah, I like that. Good deal. Thank you very much, Tom. I will. I guarantee you, I will be putting this to use. <laughs> I photograph pretty much every single day, so I'll be putting that to use. Now, I did expect another. Yeah, I was going to say, I did expect another meteorite, and before I throw this away. There's something in there, folks. So I do have one more meteorite in here. Never throw away packing material before you make sure it has the density of air. All right, so let me see here. The last, the last slice I have is another Maroni on Alusta. This one is just under 30 grams. And again, it has a really nice edge to it. This is like an arrowhead. Huh. Wow. I actually look, like that. Look at that. That better than Gibeon. Yeah. And what's great about this one is like, you can really, really see the striations in the metal. The banding in the metal. Quite a signature. Look at that. Those long bands going all the way up and down. This is cool. You know what? I hope I never lose the novelty of holding a piece of space debris in my hand for the first time. I, this, the moment I hold a piece in the moon and don't care or don't get a higher pulse, I'm quitting the biz. <laughs> so thank you very much, Tom. I appreciate you working that barter route. That worked out well for both of us. I got some nice irons and you got uh, a beautiful, I think it was a 62 gram um, Semchen individual uncut and it was olivine visible on the outside. So it was a cool, cool piece. Um, if anyone wants to show anything off, please do so or wave your hand or something. Make sure we know while I'm going to Arthur because he's probably going to be the last one unless I see someone else raise their hand. And Arthur, what you got for us? Oh, we got Ron raising his hand too. So let me see here. Spotlight. There's Arthur. What hey, you Arthur. got for us, buddy? How you doing? Doing well. Uh, I got a surprise when I went to the post office. I picked up the uh, Abba Panu, if that's the correct pronunciation. Ooh. And let me let me see where I'm, where am I here? You're in space. Yeah, I think you need yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, you got you that. You need to turn off the background. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that background is really really ruining things. All right. All right. I think we're back. Yep. 
So this is Abba Panu. Yeah. Yeah, so it's got some large class in it as well as some metal flakes. There you go. Ooh. And uh, some, some tiny chondrules. Uh, yeah. Very nice to look under the microscope, but of course you can only focus on a small area, but that's all right. And yeah. nice, nice size, uh, nice and thick. Abba Panu is uh, L 3.8 or 3.6 or something like that. It's a uh, class is uh, L3 dash F4 dash WO. It's an L3. 92.45 grams. What's interesting about Abba Panu, it's, it's a very beautiful meteorite. It, it, like right there, you see lots of metal flakes and, and there's beautiful chondrules. I think it's actually subclassed as an L3.6 or 3.8 or something like that in the Met Bowl. In the Met Bowl, it's down, it's estimated as 3.6 and the, uh, the official class is L3. Gotcha. Thank you. So if you want, you can edit that uh, COA you got and put 3.6 next to it. <laughs> Very good. Will do. And Thank notice you. the, uh, if you could, Art, uh, please show off the lack of fusion crust. Oh, yeah. That all the way around, it uh, looks pretty terrestrial. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -oh. um, so, yeah, Abba Panu does not have fusion crust on it. Uh, it it's, it's, it's definitely not a, a black bark. If anything, it's just a raised surface, but really has no discernible um, fusion crust whatsoever. So that is a beautiful piece. Thank you very much for, for sharing that with us. Gorgeous. Absolutely. And thank you so much for the opportunity to purchase this piece. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Thank you very much. Yeah, Abapin is a witness fall from, uh, from Nigeria, I think. So, yeah. Yeah, April nineteenth. Yep. yep, nice. It's my birth, my girlfriend's uh, birthday fall, so I bought oh, it. Oh, let me just say, uh, you may want to come to my live sale. <laughs> hey, Ron, coming to you, buddy. Ron, okay. okay. You may want to come to my live sale if you want some have a panoo. Just hint, word word. <laughs> I'll be there. I've got a bit of a story to tell. Um, let me change my screen here real quick. Um. Oh, let me see. Uh, share screen. Here we go. Um, all right. So, all right. Okay. Do you see the slice there? Nope. Oh, yeah. right. there we go. Share. November there? 14th. Next, Ooh. next Saturday is the live sale. Beautiful. It was just, oh, that's out. No. Yeah, that's a, okay. So you see it. Okay. Yeah. Out of so this, okay, I, this is a piece I bought about, oh, a year or so ago. And it's a decent piece. It's 206 grams. So yeah, I looked at it. I liked it. So I bought it. But when I got it, man, I'm going the wrong way. This is what I got. Oh, I got the bunch of dust. <laughs> oh, 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 that's so, What is that supposed so, to be? It's, that's, that's part of the meteorite. So you see this section right up in here? Yeah. All, all of this came off in my hand. All this section up here forward came off in my hand. So what I ended up doing is I, I basically took it to my grinders. I hated to do and ended up with this. Okay. So you see how it's, it looks like an old jalopy car. So what I've been doing this last week or two is, uh, remember a couple of weeks ago we talked about electro electrolysis mm -hmm. and, and different ways of doing things. So I, I got out my old electrolysis tank. Okay, I'm going to change the camera now. And I actually took Craig's Lyman's uh, advice and I bought myself a little DC power supply and a graphite brick. And I, I put it in the tank around 18 days or so. And I made a video, which so far I'm going to send you probably in a couple of days. Nice. So Thank let you. me uh, show you what the results were here. If I can find the proper thing to go to here. By the way, that slice looks beautiful now. Well, it, it looks better. So let me let me unshoot. Oh, it. I'm losing the track of the Compared to the rubble pile that was its sister, yeah, yeah, it yeah, looks yeah. great. I would date it. 
Okay, I'm trying to turn this off. Okay, there. So now what I want to do is stop sharing. Okay, back here. So I'm going to change my camera. So the, the slice now looks like this. Um, you see the you know the the wooden stop mm -hmm. pattern is much bolder. Yeah. So I put it through the um, I put it through the, the the bath for about 18 days and I cleaned it and put in alcohol. It's not quite done yet. Um, I've got it in the alcohol bath to, uh, till tomorrow to get out all the water. But I'm going I'm I'm going to try you know I, I try to use some of that Paleo Bond meteorite protection spray mm -hmm. and I could not get it to stop feeling tacky. So I yep. took it all off. I re-etched it. You know I have sanded and re-etched it. And I went and I got some of that automotive clear coat that we talked about. Yeah. And I'm going to try that next. After okay. I dry it out in the oven tomorrow, I'm going to put the clear coat on, see how that works. But this looks a heck of a lot better than a piece of crap I had. Because, I mean, it was still, you know, still getting rusty. It wasn't, you know, stable. Yeah. You know, Allotizing yeah. the ruster, obviously. Um, anyway, I have a question so, for you. Re, re, in, yeah. the, in the process of the paleo bonding, that, that's definitely a problem. Of yeah. it staying tacky for weeks, months, take yeah, it out a year yeah. later, it's tacky. Um, yeah. Did you bake it at all? Yes, I did. I, I went back, I, I looked up, um, I, I went back to the hangout from October 14th, and I, I actually put this in, in our oven, just a regular old convection oven, for about uh, 20 minutes at 190, is what you had recommended. Yep. And it didn't really seem to fix anything. Wow. In fact, it felt tackier. Mm. Um, so I, I took it out and I sanded all the paleo bond off. I'm just going to try because I'm really not proud of the slice. It looks better, but still, you know, it's, it's what I call putting lipstick on, on a pig. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> I would yeah. date that too. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, so tomorrow probably after I've got it all baked out and it's cooled down, I'm going to try some. Uh, some of the spray. I just went down to, to AutoZone and picked up a some clear coat. It's just there, they really have a shelf there. Um, but it's supposed to be a hard surface. And I, and I watched a couple of videos on YouTube on how to apply it. So um, I'm going to try that tomorrow. And hopefully next week I'll have the results. Yeah, I'm super excited to hear how that works then, because uh, I want to seal some of my irons like yeah. that. Yeah. So what, what I've done is I, I did another how to video. Um, from from day, day by day, exactly the process that I used. And um, I've got it almost done. I need to do one or two more sections. And I want, I want to send it into your, your YouTube channel. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, um, it's great when, when I have partners like you that, that uh, go through and it's, you know, it's education, it's trial and error. It it's, and it's a sacrificial piece, perhaps. You know what I mean? I, 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 exactly I, what it is. Yeah. I've made some sacrificial pieces before, you know? I, yeah. The first piece I tried to do reverse electrolysis on, I burnt my wire marks onto the piece. <laughs> <laughs> I call that a little too much amperage. <laughs> yeah. Well, this little power supply I got, is it was like $70, you know? Uh, I found that my, my uh, I, you know, I was using a battery charger, a smart charger. The problem with those is that the, the charger won't turn on unless there's a little bit of voltage on the battery. So I had to fool the charger. I put a little computer power supply in, in parallel with it. Then I had to prevent current feedback into the other. So I put a little steering diode in there, you know, a 10 amp diode. And that seemed to do the trick, but I found that it, it wasn't giving me true DC. It's kind of like a chopped AC signal. So with the power supply, it's a true DC signal, so you're getting true electrolysis. With AC, you actually build up on, on the anode, which is supposed to not happen um, because the current's going back and forth. Uh, with, with the DC power supply, it's only going one direction, you know, from anode to cathode. Mm. And that's, that's what you want. Yeah. So that's awesome. anyway, so yeah, you can rectify it with the diode and it should work the same. Yeah, I, I tried that. And um, uh, the DC power supply is just a lot easier. It's a cleaner setup, uh, less wires, it's much simpler. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going, going that route. I put my, my, my charger back on the shelf. So That's this awesome. is going to be the way to do it from now on. I, I, so what I want to do is uh, finish the video and sometime during the week, I'll send it to you on the same uh, YouTube uh, Dropbox, whatever it is. And That's perfect. Maybe, uh, maybe show the results next week. Yeah, that's great because I, I love having uh, partners like you that are able to 
to do experimentation and film it. And you actually do quite a good job of documenting what you're doing and filming and narrating and make my job extremely easy just to put lipstick on that pig yeah, and put it up on YouTube. <laughs> And don't worry, man, I'm not going to date your sister, so just relax. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> um, no, so that's awesome. I look, I look forward to that. Um, okay. I, I do want to hit pause for one second because I, I can't believe I almost did this, but we have a, uh, a check-in from Germany with Marco, Marco Geiser. So I'm going to play his video yeah. right now. And I'll tell you what. Uh, he decided to, because I didn't give him a, a, a subject or, or a topic, so he decided to pick one. Oriented meteorites. So nice. hang tight, guys. All right. We got our friend Marco from Germany signing in, or sending us his hellos. Hello, everybody. I hope you have a great hangout today. I want to show you some nice pieces of my main focus of the collection, which is oriented meteorites. And yeah, let's begin. The first piece I want to show is a nice Tarda, uh, my latest acquisition. Um, it's about 1.8 grams and uh, yeah, perfectly oriented, nice crust would say 99% crusted on the trailing side it has nice iridescent uh, fusion crust and I hope you like it. So Wow, that's 1.8 grams of Tarda, fully oriented. Look at this, look at that hard lip on it. Mm -hmm. Man. The next piece that I want to show you is a 1,522 gram ordinary chondrite with a really fantastic orientation. I really love that piece, it's one of my they yeah, are most favorite pieces um, of my collection and here it comes. Okay, guys, Goodness. that is unbelievable fluting. Wow. That's incredible. It, yeah. If anyone has anything like this for sale, please drop me a message below. <laughs> yeah. And don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> Look at that thing. <laughs> Oh my God, can you see how it just divots and goes all the way down? It's, it's beautiful. Is that the orientation? Yeah, that's super highly oriented to get those flutes. And not only get the flutes, but if you notice, the point of it starts here and you have, okay, like here's a good example. You see this straight line right here? Yeah. Straight lines don't exist on meteorites except through orientation type. You know what I mean? So you have all these flutes all lined up, all pointing to the same natural. Yeah. Oh, it's hyper oriented. Look at that. Even all these flutes on the back all point to the exact same area. Yeah. All these two as well. Look at that. Yeah, last but not least, I want to show you a nice nose cone oriented meteorite. 
It, has, it weighs about 1,700 grams. Um, it's unfortunately a little bit weathered, but um, yeah, the nose cone shape is clearly visible. We ha it has nice ragmic lips and yeah, I have to say I like it. <laughs> In Look at this, we have a perfect nose cone outline. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have fluting regmaglyphs all pointing down to the same nose cone. Deep, deep regmaglyphs wow. on this side. Look at that, someone hit it with some brass knuckles. <laughs> nice hole there. Too. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Holy moly. <laughs> nice. Okay, I hope you like the pieces um, that I had to show today. I have more, but I keep them, of course, for the other hangouts. So <laughs> enjoy the meeting today. I'm watching it tomorrow on YouTube, of course, like every week and uh, i'm really looking forward to it so bye bye folks have a great meeting bye bye thank you marco thanks for sharing we love you marco you rock buddy thank you so much thank you oh well, that's that's well <laughs> that's super cool having marco check in with us weekly and send in videos i, I I absolutely love the fact that he does that. And then he takes, you can tell he loves his meteorites too. He's super proud of them. And yeah, um, we're going to, he's going to be taking a vacation soon uh, for three weeks uh, holiday. And uh, then we're going to, we're going to be trying to set up one of these uh, hangouts at a good time for him to join us. So there may be a random timed hangout. And if so, that's why. So everyone, thanks for joining. I appreciate everyone's support today. Everyone's showing off your items. Uh, hello, Juan. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks a lot. Peace. Have fun, Have guys. Bye, guys. Good evening. Live long and prosper. Stay south and safe as well. <laughs> Have a great Thanksgiving. <laughs>